organizers of monkey fest oh my gosh what a fun day i've been popping in and out kind of as i fell to the laundry watched some talks it was a good time um then we were just in david's session right before this um what an amazing conference this has been i it's just been jam-packed with amazing content and i remember when i submitted the talk for this and i asked jake i was like oh we'll do what's new with xamarin that'll be fun and then i looked at all the other talks and i was like oh man all the other talks are really cool. So hopefully we don't put you guys to sleep. I know you've had a full day of really cool content. Um, I'm going to share my screen and also my slides, which hold on. Got to do a few clicks here from beginning. Go back into this. Share this screen too. Perfect. All right. Wow. That's so easy. I was just saying in the DMs. Better than Teams. Don't tell anyone I said that on the Teams team. This, this is too easy. Um, welcome to what's new with Xamarin. So we have 90 minutes for this session. We're probably going to take a lot closer to 60, plenty of time for Q and A at the end. Don't forget to go to the reception after this at 6 PM Eastern or whatever time that is in, in your time zone. Um, but we're the last session of the day for folks who have chosen this track. Um, and, and Sam's talk is at the same time it's going to be recorded, I believe. So you aren't missing out too much. Um, but we're really excited to talk about Xamarin Forms 5, talk about some of the tooling stuff. Um, while you're all super excited and looking forward to Maui and everything, we also want to make sure that you're excited about what you can use right now. So I'm Maddie Legere. I'm a PM on the Xamarin team. I work on developer productivity. Um, you know, you might see me on Twitter on the community standups with Dave. And I am super excited to have with us our newest Xamarin team member. Hi, everyone. My name is Jake. I'm also a PM on Xamarin. Looking forward to this chat. Nice to meet you all. Yeah. So Jake will be on hopefully a, a future community stand up. And I think he was on early, but Jake was a Jake was an intern last year and then came back. He loved us so much. He came back this summer and was like, I'm gonna join you guys full time. And two weeks in, he was like, Wow, Maddie, Dave, never talk to me again. No, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, but here we are. So now I'm I'm looping him into all the talks, and it's gonna be a great uh, hour we're all gonna spend together. It's also uh, a Saturday before I take a week off. So excuse me for being really in a good mood because I'm ready to take a week off. Uh, and before I turn it over to Jake, I want to call out how many contributors we've had for Xamarin Forms 5 so far. I was gonna try and take the pictures. We have that cool slide with everyone's faces, but I, half of you don't set your, your GitHub profile pictures. So I wasn't gonna have like 15 GitHub bots on this slide. So I, I went with the alias this time. Um, but thank you so much. I am so wildly impressed by the amount of people we've had contributing code into Xamarin Forms 5 and, and even re like reviewing PRs. We've had so many community members come in and review PRs and give really, really high quality feedback. And Xamarin Forms 5 is a massive release. Um, and and I, it would just be so totally impossible. Uh, yes, John, totally. The new issue template does count. That's about the contributions I make usually. So once I updated the actual templates once, that's a contribution. So uh, yeah, very, very exciting. And you can actually see who's contributed and what PRs they contributed to or reviewed on the Xamarin Forms release notes, which I think is a, a really nice thing. We started doing a few releases ago. So um, cool. All right, next slide. Just check in my DMs. There's like a lot of, a lot of tabs here. Um, great. And this should continue loading. Perfect. Uh, and of course, I can't say thank you to our community members without mentioning the ones who take time out of their lives to create packages for other people. Um, and, and this slide, I keep jamming icons on and I'm running out of room. So please Twitter DM me if uh, your icon is not on here and you're super offended. But at some point, I'm not going to have any more screen real estate. So, so bear with me. Getting early. Hi, Dave. Thanks for joining. Hope your session went well. I hope you brought all your, your people over. Um, but of course, uh, you know, if, if you contribute to any of these things, um, if you, if you have any of these, you kind of work on them in your free time or you work on them full time. Thank you so much, because this is such a huge part of what makes Xamarin forms so powerful and robust. All right. I'm going to stop thanking people. Big love fest today. I'm going to talk it over to toss it over to Jake to talk about what's new in productivity. Hey. 
uh, oh yeah, I'm not muted. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, am I muted right now? I'm not, it's great. So yeah, um, we have a lot of new stuff within productivity for uh, Xamarin moving forward. Um, so a big part of .NET 6 in the next year is unification. As part of this theme, Xamarin's actually merging with .NET. And even though we're not going to be in the BCL until .NET 6, we're actually already working on unifying our tools with the rest of .NET. Now, when we initially launched Hot Reload, it was on mono, and it was a success. We developed faster, you developed faster. However, there were two issues that we ran into. One, we knew early on that it could be faster. Second was that we knew that this should work on UWP. Any cross-platform experience that you have with Android and iOS, the UWP people should also get support for. However, now we're part of .NET. With that, we have a lot more conversations with the .NET teams. It's COVID times, so we took a virtual walk over to the XAML experience, Experiences team and asked to talk about their hot reload. We knew we could leverage their own experiences and learn something from them. Something totally different actually came from those conversations. So what we refer to as the unified XAML hot reload. We totally rebuilt XAML, or we totally rebuilt hot reload from the ground up and improved the XAML stack to support mono. We also enabled a lot of the new features for Xamarin devs that previous XAML devs were used to. So let's go through some of the major improvements. The first one is UWP. You can get the same hot reload experience now between Android, iOS, and UWP within Xamarin. The second is Live Visual Tree. This was a feature that we knew that UWP developers had loved, and had loved for a long time, and we wanted to make sure that Xamarin developers had it across Android, iOS, and UWP. The third is improved performance. Um, this comes with actually a creation called in Incremental Hot Reload, which we've worked on for a while. This allows us to refresh only part of your page instead of a full page refresh. And soon, we're hoping to have the inspector working for your Xamarin applications. Now let's go over to the demo. Give me a few seconds to share my screen. I think I can unshare mine too. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> This makes more sense. All the swapping. There we go, just a little bit. Hmm. Uh, oh yeah, that's working. Great. So hopefully, oh boy. Oh. Flickering for everyone else? We're yep. gonna, yeah. There we go. Oh. Oh, hello. Okay, it unshared. <laughs> Try it again. <laughs> nice, great. Oh, so, perfect. I got very confused there. So with this, I have an app. Big shout out to Dave Ortonow for giving me this app. It's something he created. And currently, it's set to target iOS. But let's say I wanted to do something else like, I don't know, something crazy, like targeting UWP and hoping for all the features to still work. So I can start this app, deploy to my local machine. And as soon as this builds up, I've got a beautiful UWP application. Move it over here. This over there. Perfect. So as you can see, this app's not fully finished. And so let's say I'm a new developer, and I've never worked on this app before. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try and figure out how this app's built. I can go over to the live visual tree over here. And I'm actually using uh, the arrow keys to move here. And I can go down to this application, and I can start to see some of the views within my application. So I can see that there's a grid, and within the grid, there's a tab view. And within that tab view, I can actually start seeing some of the pages that I have within this application. So let's look at the home page. Immediately, I get to see more of the views within it. So I can see a scroll view, a grid that contains more scroll views. And I know, OK, I'm pretty sure this top scroll view is the one that I want. Let's look at what, what's in it. So I see a stack layout, that makes sense, and then some category card views, which are some custom controls. So let's uh, actually inspect the scroll view. And I have no idea where this is within the code. So it immediately pulls it up for me, shows me where it is in my code. And I can even see the background color here, which is this horrible, horrible yellow. So let's change this to maybe um, red. It's close to Christmas time. 
We'll go with, you know, a nice Christmas thread. And immediately, we can see the change reflected in the app. But let's see if we can even go further. Let's look at this custom control, the category card view. And we notice that immediately, as soon as I click on it, it pulls up this other page. So with this, I don't know this entire code base, but looking at just the views within it, I am able to uh, move through my code more quickly. So again, let's say there's you know, this background color that's white, and I'm like, okay, I'm trying to go for a Christmas theme here. Let's change this to a green. Immediately, you see the app refreshes. So I still don't love how this looks, but at least it's Christmas themed. Um, and so now you can see we have Hot Reload working on UWP uh, within Xamarin. So let's, let's move forward. Let's say I wanted to uh, target something else. Um, one second. So what I can actually do is I can go over to iOS. And you can even see here that uh, I can actually target my iPhone. Um, oh. One second. Cool. Sorry, I just got, got a uh, explanation as to why a feature wasn't working. I realized I have AirPlay off. My screen share? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So Jake is going to use an app called Reflector 3, which I've been talking about a lot lately. Um, it's third party, it's awesome. I love it, but regularly it stops working and you're like, why it's broken. And then you're convinced it's the app. And then it turns out you just forgot to like airplay your phone actually, or whatever it is. Um, or, you know, your phone fell asleep and then it disconnected it. So I, uh, it's, it's great, but not when you want to, not when you need it to work, that it never works the right way. That's true. Yeah. No, it's I'm awesome. Um, One more second to figure this out. And otherwise, I'm going to just probably show you guys through the screen so you can actually see some of the uh, experiences that we have enabled within Hot Restart. Airplay. One more try. Regardless, I should still be able to show you guys this amazing experience that we have enabled within Hot Restart. Yeah. Oh, hey, Sweetie. Yeah, Reflect so, is really good. So. It's just um, with part of this, with these updates to Hot Reload, I can actually run my app here. My phone's connected to my computer. It's just plugged in. And you can immediately see that it's building. And even as, as soon as this is up, you can see that I have to launch the app on my phone. And now look at that. I have the fully built app. Maybe I can hold it up here and you guys can see it a little bit better on my phone. And this is great. I love that I can update my uh, apps and have a hot reload experience just with having my iPhone connected to my Windows computer. However, that's not the only experience that we've now enabled. So with the live visual tree, we can go through the exact same process. So I can go back down to this tab view. I can look at all of these different pages. Again, I'm using my arrow keys. I'm not even clicking on it. I'm a Vim power user, so I hate putting my hand on the mouse. Um, and so I can even go down to the scroll view, click it again, brings up the exact same page, change this to, I don't know, let's say, uh, let's change it back to a white, just a, a plain white. We can see on the app, even this top part here is now white. And I can again, even within this scroll view, I can go down to this custom control, this category card view, I can change this to white too. And now on my app, the full background for the stack layout is white, which is great. I love that I can have these really fast experiences when I'm developing using Xamarin. So how can we actually get at these features? So for how to restart, you can go to tools, options, go up to environment, and then within this, oh, I didn't open it. We actually have preview features. And within that, you can enable Xamarin Hot Restart. It does require you to restart. And the other thing is that it actually requires an Apple developer account to get access. However, we're looking at getting free support for this moving forward, and we'll keep you guys up to date about it. 
The other experience, incremental hot reload, is, that, is essentially the same thing. We can walk through it again. So you can go to Tools, Options. Within Options, we actually can go to um, Debugging. If I can find it, here it is, Debugging. And within that, we're actually in the Options panel now. We have our own panel here, Hot Reload, under it, Xamarin Forms. And so right now, the normal experience is the full page. But if you want access to these new features, all you have to do is change this to Changes Only, and you'll get, you'll get access to the new Hot Reload. So that's some of the new features that we have to improve your development experience for Xamarin. I'm going to hand it back off to Maddie Legere now. Thanks. Hey. All right. OK, Yvonne shared. I'm Ray Sharon. Here we go. Bam. All right, here's your summary slide. Hot Reload 2.0. We'll look at it a little bit more when I when I switch over to my phone too. Very exciting. UWP support, LVT, um, Hot Restart. And we also have a new XAML data binding diagnostics window, which I can maybe cruise by if uh, if I'm if I get to it in my demo and we'll see how we're doing on time. Um, all in Visual Studio 16.8, which is out now. So go into your Visual Studio installer and click update and it'll do it all for you. Um, and 16.9 is in preview. And, and in 16.9, we're actually going to turn a lot of these things on by default. So um, if you don't, if you have to go in and manually do it now, that's because they're still off by default because they're in preview because you want to make sure they work. Um, but you'll always be able to switch back, especially with hot re reload to the old one in case you need it. Um, we have a question from Damien. What's up? Uh, is Live Visual Tree also supported on VS for Mac? So I don't know if it works with the one with the most recent release, but we definitely have it working either in preview or in stable. I should really check on that. Um, I haven't been demoing for Mac recently because I was too afraid to update to Big Sur. And I've been showing off how research so much, I've had no need to open my Mac. So it's uh, got to do my research for sure. All right, next slide. All right, so we're going to talk about what's new on the SDK side of the house. Um, and, and there's kind of three areas I want to talk about. Xamarin Essentials, got some cool stuff in, in the, the next release. Xamarin Forms 5. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about the Xamarin Community Toolkit as well. So if you haven't heard of that, I'll give you some pointers on where to start with that. Xamarin Essentials 1.6. I'm going to play this video. So besides Mac OS support, this is probably my favorite release of Xamarin Essentials uh, so far because of this right here, App Actions. So you can like hold down on the app button and then click the action. And I started using that with like calendar events. Love it. I'm a big Android power user. So uh, app actions I've had for a while, unlike you iOS people. But now they're in Xamarin Essentials. Uh, and of course, there's file pickers and media pickers, contact support, um, and the ability to take, take in and then access screenshots. So lots of really powerful stuff in the latest Xamarin Essentials. Um, it's on NuGet. I think it's like pre-3 or pre-4. And of course, it's on GitHub as well. So you can uh, look and contribute at, at any time to all the great stuff that's happening. All right, next. Um, so I'm. I, there have been a lot of Xamarin Forms related talks today, so I'm not going to go through you know the last year plus slide. And, and you might have seen this at .NET Conf. You might have seen this at a couple of the other conferences we've been at recently. Um, David actually took the time to just brain dump all of the things he thinks we stuck in Xamarin Forms in the last year, um, and we put it on the slide because it looks pretty cool. And it's not even all of it. But we're kind of moving past Xamarin Forms 4. And I remember when 4.0 went out and everyone was like, wow, Xamarin Forms 4.0, shell. That's like the big thing. Visual, wow. Feels like a lifetime ago. That was a year ago. So um, Xamarin Forms 5 is like even more wild and exciting than Xamarin Forms 4 was. Uh, and, and there's a lot that's been going on in the Xamarin Forms team. And if you, if you follow on the GitHub, um, it's been moving fast. So we'll look at a couple of these in code, but I want to make sure that I give you some pretty examples made by community members. And I think there's supposed to be a GitHub link down here. Um, so hopefully when I upload my slides later, it has that. But as you all know, some of our community members are amazing at, at uh, making UXs look good. And I am not. So that's what these slides are for. Uh, first and foremost, gradients. If you're a community stand-up joiner, sometimes you've probably heard me talk about gradients. If you were at the Xamarin Developer Summit last year, 
you might have remembered me having a meltdown because gradients did not get a lot of votes in the voting system on what we needed to do in Xamarin Forms. So despite my whining, uh, it was not really a thing until recently I got a message from Samantha, who's the dev lead for Xamarin Forms, or I guess all of Xamarin SDKs now. Congrats, Sam. Uh, and she said, we're finally giving you gradients. And I freaked out. So it's this easy. Love, love me a good gradient. Um, I've been putting them in everything. And of course the carousel view, which has been in preview for a little bit. So you might have been using it already. I call this the shopping view, I'm a big online shopper. So, you know, you open up the page for the, the pair of leggings you want and you swipe through all the different angles. That's carousel view. And it's basically the same as collection view. The more I use it, the more I realize it's just collection view, but you know, it can be sideways. You can have indicators. It's kind of for big full screen things instead of, you know, list, 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 but super easy to use. I've actually had a couple apps where I had a, a list view or a collection view and I've just like copy pasted the data template and turned it into a carousel view pretty easily. Drag and drop. Ooh. So we're not talking about duo today. I feel like I might've seen there was a duo related session either here or at .NET Conf. I can't remember, but duo is a, uh, the duo is really cool. There's some, some great demo apps out there. And one thing that we saw a lot of users want uh, was the ability to drag from one half of the duo to the other half of the Surface duo. It's a, du it's a dual screen device. Uh, so they built in Xamarin Forms the ability to drag things. And it's just gesture recognizers. So things you're already familiar with, with taps and stuff. Um, drag gesture recognizer and drop gesture recognizer. Too many words. Gesture recognizer. Um, and you know, you add the, the drag to the button and the drop to the stack layout and that's it. So pretty nice. Uh, although I don't know who chose that this is going to be green in the background, David, I think this is your sample app. So not, not the nicest, you know, uh, radio buttons. You might've remembered this time, I guess probably a year and a half ago, Xamarin developer summit. We, we kind of publicly came out and said, and I believe David was the one who said this. Uh, we're not doing the least common denominator thing anymore. We're not going to say, oh, iOS doesn't have a checkbox. iOS doesn't have a radio button, whatever it is. So we're just not going to build it in Xamarin Forms. If it's something that we think is pretty you know, fundamental to UI design, we will build it and put it in. Uh, we'll do the custom rendering kind of part for you with Xamarin Forms. So you know, we got the checkbox, we have the radio button. Um, and now we're expanding that even further to being able to stick control templates inside of your radio button. So you can see that you've either got the, the oh, that's the wrong screen. This is the screen my mouse is on. I, I'm watching my presentation here, but it's actually over there. Uh, you can pick just your regular one or you could stick a control template in it. There's some glyphs with those icon fonts. Feels like an eternity that those ago that those came out, but they're still a pretty new feature. Um, which I love, it's, just, it's the font awesome font in this case. Uh, and, and you can make your radio buttons A, bigger so that people's thumbs actually hit them and B, more, more informative. Remember phone bumping, oh my goodness. I remember bump, that was so fun. Oh, all right, shapes and paths. Ooh. So you may be familiar with Skia Sharp. I love Skia Sharp, I'm really bad at it. I know Kim did kind of the opening session today and, and Kim is a Skia Sharp master. I am not. But uh, sometimes you just need like a little line somewhere, something, something you know, you'll make a box view and then you'll put it at a weird place and then it'll be on a different phone and you're like, oh no, now the box view is way too thick or it's the wrong size. No more. First party shapes and paths API. Nikita says Skia Sharp's easy. Probably for you. I am... Not a front end dev, not a skia sharp dev. <laughs> I very much struggle with it. Um, this is a really good example. Uh, I think I can't remember whose app this is. If this is your app, please put it in the chat, take credit for it. But this is just made with, with the first party shapes and paths API. So you have those nice chat bubbles that have the little triangle at the bottom. You have this dashed line, uh, which you can actually see is a really small kind of amount of code here. Um, and it's super easy. You can also do things like in the background, put a line through the background and then on the, on one side of that line, have a different background color. Um, and this has made it really easy for me to make my apps a little bit more custom, um, with custom shapes and everything without having to do a full custom renderer. Yes. You can use your shapes with brushes. Yes. So one thing I've seen, there was one, um, example and I 
can't remember where I saw it, but it was a path that was a like a pink, whatever it was. And then on the bottom side of the path was like a pink to white gradient or blue to white gradient or whatever it is. And then the top half of the path, it was white. So it was this really cool, like asymmetrical design thing. Love it. I would never be able to think of it myself. Um, oh, of course, swipe view, the email, the email view, I call it. So when you're in Gmail and you're like archive, 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 archive me every morning. Um, that's what you have now first party in Xamarin Forms. So it's super simple. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at this in the sample code as well. Uh, left items, right items. It's got an invoked call. You can also do command binding um, with parameters. So if you're, if you're someone who does the proper MVVM thing, that works great. And yes, it does totally support custom views. So uh, you can really jazz it up and make it look like whatever you want it to. All right. Oh, okay. Before we hop into the demo, we do have to talk about the Xamarin Community Toolkit. So we kind of uh, brought it back from from the dead, maybe. I don't know. It always existed, Xamarin.community toolkit. Um, and it was on the Xamarin GitHub, Xamarin slash Xamarin Community Toolkit. But it really we didn't really use it for anything. Um, and as part of what Jake said earlier, this unification with .NET 5 or with .NET throughout .NET 5 and .NET 6. Um, .NET was like, hey, we should kind of sync up our release schedules in a way that makes sense. So that when we ship a new .NET and you ship a new Xamarin, everything goes out at the same time and everything works together and everyone's happy. And we were like, cool, but you guys ship once a year. And we like to throw stuff in there and call it experimental and like just let it kind of hang out for a bit. And then maybe we promote it, maybe we don't. And they were like, yeah, okay, well, you know, we're .NET. We don't let you just like throw stuff in and never deal with it. So please do the right thing. And we were like, oh no, what do we do with all of our fun experiments? Um, and some of our community members and employees had kind of said, oh, you know what? Well, we have this community toolkit. Why don't we put things that are not solid enough or fundamental enough to the Xamarin experience to go into the actual forms SDK? Because um, you want to keep that as small as possible, right? New developers don't need to be bogged down with all this extra stuff that they're not going to use. It's just confusing. Um, why don't we put them in the Xamarin community toolkit? So you have something where you can just add this in, get a bunch of converters, get a bunch of the boilerplate code you usually add in, um, get some basic like animations and extensions and helpers, the things that like subscription helper saves my life, saves me a lot of Googling every time I write an app now. Um, all these things we put into a package. And then uh, people started adding their own custom controls and views into it as well. So we have a camera view and an avatar view and uh, an expander. I think we're going to look at that one in a second. Um, my personal favorite is the toast. Love a good toast. I, I think I have a toast in my demo, which is only there just so I can have a toast in my app. Um, and C Sharp UI. So you might have uh, seen Vincent H on Twitter um, or on blogs. He's, he's super active in our community. He's great. And he really is not a XAML fan. I know in, if you were in David's session previously, you might have heard a little bit about the XAML versus C Sharp UI um, life. And so, so Vincent was like, hey, we can write C Sharp UIs in Xamarin, but it's not as nice and neat as I want it to be. Uh, it's kind of messy. There's a lot of extra stuff I have to do to make that work and look nice. So he wrote a bunch of markup extensions for C Sharp UI, C Sharp for markup. Um, and originally it was kind of his own project that was brewing in his own GitHub. And, and he offered to kind of put it into Xamarin all up. And we chose the community toolkit for it because he'll still own it. It's still absolutely his, his code base. And, and he can still contribute to it really rapidly. But now it's on the Xamarin GitHub. Hopefully that you know makes more people use it. And also more people contribute to it. Um, so yeah, if you're, if you're interested in C Sharp UI, absolutely go into the Xamarin community toolkit and help Vincent out here. He's done a bunch of work. And I really like where this is right now, but of course we can always add more stuff. So feel free to contribute. Maybe you'll be on a slide in one of my next presentations. In 2021, I'm done presenting for 2020. I'm done with 2020. After this, I'm out. You guys are the last one. I'm very excited. Uh, Nikita said in the chat, Expander is awesome. Yes, Expander is awesome. I love the Expander. Uh, it's, it's super easy to use and it just looks so nice. Um, I haven't really thought of where I, I see this in apps yet. I usually like to have examples like, you know, my shopping example, my Gmail example. 
Um, but I feel like I do see this all the time and I just haven't actually thought it through yet. I also know that this would be a total pain to code if I guess, you know, Javier didn't do it for me. So now maybe I'll start using these because this is pretty simple. It's got the expand and collapse animations. Love when people do my animations for me. Um, and of course, things like the header and and yeah, it's just super nice. Sweeky's, Sweeky's already using it with customers because it's great. Uh, it's in the community toolkit. Um, tab bars, tab view, uh, another community stand up reference. Uh, I almost always have a blog that's like, hey, customize your tab bar to do this one really nitpicky thing. And uh, it's like, okay, to make a custom renderer and blah, 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 blah. No, no more. Uh, another Javier invention, just nice custom DIY tab views. So you have a, a no more like, you know, looks like Android wants tabs to look like, looks like iPhone wants tabs to look like. It's all custom. You have this nice little shadow on this plus sign here. Uh, you know, the one that you're not on is, the, it's it's great. I can't describe it well, but yes, David, uh, David just uh, went through the workflow, which is David Wines, Javier builds something and everyone wins. Um, that's what I tried to do with gradients. And I think I'm the only person who's really as excited about it as we should be. But if you want something to get done, have David whine about it. Uh, and finally, app bar. So I think this is uh, this is a pretty dated GIF, the squeaky wheel. Yes, that is Dave. Um, but yeah, you can stick an image in your, your app bar now, which is pretty cool, um, instead of just a color. So lots and lots of customizations. So these past few things, the C-sharp UI, uh, um, expander, tab view, app bar, app bar, community toolkit. Everything else that we showed before that, Xamarin Forms 5. But at this point, uh, I just add them both. I add Essentials, Xamarin Forms is in there with the new template. Um, actually, Essentials is in there with the templates now too. But I just go in, I add community toolkit right off the bat. Kind of like Pancake View. If you use Pancake View for anything, that's another one I just add in off the bat at this point. So, all right. We're gonna take a look at some of these in code. Very exciting. Um, my iPhone did not fall asleep by some miracle. It's plugged in. Oh, I have to pull back up. Everything just minimized. Okay, it's my iPhone. I just factory reset it recently because it would not update from the beta number two, 14 beta number two. Um, but this is, this is using hot restart right now. It's got my iPhone. Jake showed us how to set it up. Um, I'm just going to hit debug, let it, let it roll for a second. Um, and this is an app I started working on for .NET Conf that I'm still working on. It hasn't gotten much prettier, but, um, I want to show you how I made it as decent looking as I did with very little effort. No custom, no custom renders for me. Um, given this a second, it's going to ask me to launch it. I have not yet put this app on my Mac. I am too afraid to see what state it's in. So I have literally developed this entirely using hot restart, uh, my iPhone and my PC, and then the Android emulator to sanity check things sometimes. So uh, I've got the same live visual tree experience Jake was showing. This is a shell app. It's super, super simple, just two tabs. Um, and in this home page, I have this list of plants. And I can't click this because um, it's a physical phone, not an emulator. Boop. Oh my goodness. See, Reflector is amazing, except when it does stuff like that. So this is supposed to show me my plant name up top here, uh, but it doesn't because I probably am binding to the wrong thing. I did this all locally. Here's a great tip. If you're too lazy to set up MVVM and you're just working on UI, declare your item source <laughs> in your XAML as an array. Don't do this if you're writing a real app that needs real data, but do this if you're writing a UI that you need fake data for. So I'll change this binding from name, which was what it would have been had I been properly data binding to just dot. So it binds to itself. Updates right away. So now I can see it's the same image, but uh, at least I have my nice custom font here. Um, and it tells me the different apps I have in, or apps, different plants I have in my array here. Um, so how am I doing this custom font? Right, and also how do I make this not so ugly? Uh, because this font's really ugly. David mentioned this, and it's something that we're gonna continue to improve upon with um, uh, .NET MAUI and the single project experience. But 
embedded fonts are newish to Xamarin Forms. And if you haven't heard about this yet, this is going to save your life. It is so much easier. Uh, you drop it into the resources folder or wherever you want in your Xamarin Forms and your .NET standard project. Get off your pickles if you're on those. I've got TTS, I've got OTF. I use a website called dafont, D-A-F-O-N-T dot com to find kind of royalty free fonts that are community designed. They're amazing. Um, and I pulled in this one, Michelle Garden. And then I went into my assemblyinfo.cs. I just exported it with an alias. That's it. Make sure your font when you drag it in is set as a, uh, where's your property panel? I don't know. Oh, behind me. Great. Hide that. Uh, an embedded resource. So make sure that when you drag the font in, the build actions embedded resource, and then put it as export font in your assembly info. And then in your, you know, wherever you want. Yes, you can use icon fonts the same way, Nikita. So I have my, that's how I'm doing these down here is, is icon fonts. Um, I think I, yeah, I pulled in material, material design icons, web font. Uh, so then I'll uncomment this. And I feel like every time I do a demo, I have to remember how to comment and uncomment quickly in XAML, but it's KC to comment, control KC to comment, control KU to uncomment. Um, and because Hot Reload is still in preview, the newest one, it's not picking up app.xaml changes yet, although it is soon. Um, let me save this as well. And so I just set this to my header. I'm gonna hot restart real quick. Go to second starts rebuilding. So the way Hot Restart works, um, I'm signed in with my Apple developer account. Uh, they're paid right now. They will be free in the future, hopefully. Um, and and I just logged into VS with it. Um, and, and it's rebuilding and redeploying the app kind of inside the existing shell on the device. So it doesn't have to do the whole re-signing step or anything. Um, so it's, it's pretty snappy. And now I have my nice new font up top. Love a good script font. Um, yeah, let me see the chat. Oh yes, company specific fonts. So I love fonts, um, except for fonts that are bad. I don't like bad fonts. All right, we can continue to spruce up this app though using some more Xamarin Forms 5 features. So let's pop down in here and I've got some, some uh, hidden code. Um, actually, you know what? I have hidden code up top for my favorite thing in the world, a gradient. This is how easy it is to do gradients. Let me uncomment this as well. And you'll see in the background, it's just gonna change real quick. You just set the stops, the start point and the end point. So with gradients, it's kind of like a linear, there was, there's also radial gradients, but with this particular gradient, it's linear. So I'm going from zero, zero, which is the top left up here to zero, one, which is the bottom left here. So it's a, an up and down gradient. Um, and then of course I can do like, zero, zero to one, one to the other corner. So it's angled. Uh, I could do, oh, did I delete a quote? Yes, I did. Uh, there we go. Side to side, angle it, all the things. It's great. Um, and of course I can add as many stops as I want. So I can go in here, copy this. And Jake, when you mentioned Vim key bindings, I laughed because I really want to turn mine back on. But every time I do, I start to screw things up and then I get halfway through a demo and I wish I had them on, like in that case. Um, I'll set another stop and then I'll change a different color. So I'll, I'll not use a static resource here. Let's just use something really blasphemous like pink. Now I have a gradient with three colors in it. Bam. Halfway through, it's going to go to pink. And then at the end, it's going to go to one or to dark green. So really, really simple. Um, get rid of that. Awesome to customize. And uh, uh, yeah, I've, I've really been enjoying playing around with gradients if you can't tell all right let's pop down into this uh carousel view first of all i have no idea in this app right now how many items i have in this list so i want to make an indicator view um this is another xaml hot reload uh weird weirdity right now that we're going to fix soon so you can see it bumps up it knows the indicator view is there uh, but it's not actually put on the carousel view yet and the way an indicator view is laid out I gave it a name. That's how you reference it from the carousel view. We'll do that in a second. I gave it a color for the circles that I want for items representing each item in my carousel. Um, and then, you know, the selected color for the one that it's actually on and then the normal formatting stuff. So let's on this carousel view, give it an indicator view. 
and I'm gonna put indicator view. Now, since since I gave it an X name, it's creating a new item right now. Um, so that's why it's not finding it. Another thing we're trying to fix uh, with hot reload, but previously this would probably just, you know, break everything. At least it's ignoring it right now, which is good. Uh, it's gonna ask me to launch it in a second. Boop, 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 boop. It's been deployed. Oh my goodness. Okay, there we go. Slow today, like me. I'm really, I'm really having a hard time today. And where'd it go? Where's my indicator view? Carousel view, indicator view, indicator view. Okay. Indicator view. That's what I named it. I'm not going crazy. Uh, all right. Just going to do a nice clean and rebuild real quick. Rebuild. Make sure I'm not... Am I, if I'm missing something obvious, please tell me in the chat because <laughs> I'm really tired. Uh, give it a second. It's rebuilding. What's it going on in the chat? Oh, Dave, I don't know how many items are there. Yeah, no, I mean either. I wish I could, but my indicator view isn't loading. Um, can't wait to see you all in person. Yes, I can't wait to see you all in person either. Oh my gosh. I was looking at pictures from a Xamarin Developer Summit and you know me and Dave and James and all of our favorite people. I know a lot of pictures with Dan. Dwayne, I don't know if you're in here. I have a great picture you took of me. That's really funny. I'm really cold in the picture. I have a giant blanket over me. But oh my gosh, I miss it so much. I never thought I'd want to be cramped on a plane before. Um, ooh, Zam fan. I have no idea who you are, but I'm glad you're a fan. Thanks for joining. What about the Live Property Explorer? Great question. Um, the Live Property Explorer is something we are looking at bringing over. Hello, indicator view. Uh, we're looking at bringing over soon. So not yet. Uh, it's something that it doesn't exist on Mac. So with Live Visual Tree on Windows, it was easy because it existed and we just hooked the existing Xamarin app into it. And I'm going to right click deploy this while I talk to and hopefully it'll uh, fix it. We'll see. Um, yes, Live Property Explorer exists on Windows. So we can hook it up for Xamarin Forms apps and have it work, but it's not going to work on Mac yet until we rebuild it. So that's kind of the next step is making sure that we have the Live Property Explorer working on Mac. Also, Xamarin Forms objects are a different type than the kind of existing uh, UWP and, and WPF types. So there's some stuff we have to work out there, but we actually, uh, I think it's on, on the docket for January for things we're gonna work on. This is my last try with this indicator view, by the way. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna lose it. I don't know, I don't know. I've done this demo like 3000 times in the past two weeks. Maybe I spelled indicator wrong, who knows? Uh, but I have plenty of other things to show you, so don't worry. Also, my computer is super upset with me because I am uh, running Teams and quite a few Chrome-based browsers right now. Okay. We're going to deploy it. It's doing its thing. At least it's super fast. Give it a second for the debugger to turn on. And... No. All right. Oh. Right as I was going to start talking about other code, it starts working. There you go. Okay. Uh, yeah, check to see the binding errors. That's a good point. I don't think it's... Uh, it's not finding the indicator view right now, but that's okay. Um, I can... Maybe I'll build this and run this in on, in, on Android if we have some time, but I don't want to waste all your time watching uh, me fight with Visual Studio. All right. Let's talk about uh, some shapes. So one thing I wanted on this app was to indicate how much water and sunlight my plants needed. And not by a number, but by kind of relative, like scale of one to three, one to five, just like, I know my aloe vera needs a lot of sun, and very, very little water, or I will kill it. Uh, UFC 2050, me fighting with VS, yes. Welcome, welcome to the show. So I'm gonna click in, let me make sure I'm in the right place in my code into my carousel view. Um, indicator view is picking up the name indicator view. I don't know what's up with you. Um, and then I have this grid with a label image and these two labels that say sun. And that's not popping up, but it should. I know what I might do. Let's try this. Ooh, <laughs> my cursor's not in the right place. Oh, this is horrible. Okay. 
that's what's going on. So that text is white. So let's fix this. Text color equals black. There we go. Live debugging. Okay, now my cursor is back to the normal place. So I don't know what that's about. Add that in. I have my sun and water labels. And then I want to draw some shapes to indicate how much they need. So for the aloe vera, let's open up this stack layout here and it's a horizontal stack layout I made um, just centered I stuck it in my grid in this card kind of here and it's made of three ellipses first party Xamarin Forms API that's it ellipse tell the color you want to stick in it um, because they're centered it's going to be a circle but if I set custom widths and heights you can kind of stretch it however you want um, so I know that this needs as much sun as possible and then with this one, what I did was I made two ellipses that were uh, a different color to kind of indicate that it only needs one circle, uh, one circle's worth of water. And then really, this should be like half a circle's worth of water, but I'm not going to make you do that today. Aloe vera's are tricky. Uh, and then what I really want to get fancy, uh, I don't want to have to see words here. As little localization as possible is how I roll. So uh, I want to use icons wherever I can. And, and down here, I have a sun icon, I have a plant icon, and I'm using a font image, um, a font, an icon font in my app there. But what I actually did was I Googled the sun icon, and I found an SVG. And I hit right click inspect source, and I copy pasted the source of that sun SVG into my app. And let me comment this out first. So I did not uh, miraculously learn how to write SVG code like in my sleep. I copy pasted this from the internet. Um, but I just put it in a layout, in an absolute layout. Um, I gave it a scale. I told it where in my grid I wanted it. And I capitalized the word path, the word data, and the word fill using multi caret editing. If you're not, a, I can't remember the shortcut off the top of my head. But then whenever, whenever I remember it, I use it a lot. Um, change everything to capitals. And the XAML recognized it immediately as a proper SVG that just renders in my app perfectly. Cross-platform, no resources, nothing. It's just there in my XAML. Uh, the right thing to do would probably put, be put this in a separate XAML file and pull it in, uh, but works pretty good. And what's cool is that with Hot Reload, I can kind of just uh, delete some stuff. I think just gets rid of a little piece of the sun, so. Yeah, SVGs are cool. I've learned a lot about them uh, recently. The more people, the more that I've heard people complaining about how we don't support SVGs. So, which we should at Jonathan in the chat. All right, almost done. Two more things I want to show you. One, the swipe view. Love swipe view. So I have this set up right now. This is my plants page. So this is the page where I'm I'm aspirationally going to add and remove plants from my master list of plants um and it's it's a it's a caris it's a collection view oh my goodness not a carousel view same thing though i'm just data binding so you know i can add however many plants i want to my list of plants add them in the list uh, but the idea is that i want to be able to swipe them to delete them and then i want on the other side i want to be able to swipe it and favorite it now we'll put it kind of at the top of the list so that when i have to look for plants uh, i can you know my out that's the one I always forget. So I have my swipe view right here. Um, and if I go into my LVT, oh, that tab open, I can see it's a collection view made of a ton of swipe views. And, and it has the extra ones right now from me copying and deleting those extra uh, elements. I'll go to my swipe view, and I've got left items. My left item is just text, delete, background color white. And then I gave it an icon image source. Um, that icon image source is using a font image source from the same icons I'm using for my tabs down here. So in my app shell, I'm using these icons as a font for the tabs. Now I'm using the same, oh, this is a phone, not an emulator. There we go. Uh, same icons I'm using here in my uh, app. And so I know Jake mentioned in my swipe view. And so Jake mentioned that XAML hot reload saves your state now. It doesn't trash the whole page and reload it, which is great because I can do something like change the uh, the control that is building this swipe view here and it just refreshes really quickly. Um, 
usually you'd have to wait for a whole collection view to just kind of like think back up. And depending on the certain, uh, depending on the platform, so on Android, it'll actually leave your swipe view open because of how Android implements swipe view. It's really nice. On iOS, it closes it, but then you just reopen it. Um, all right, so let's add some right items to this. It's literally copy pasting this code I already have. So I have swipe view left items, copy, paste, right items. Then I want to change my uh, text here from delete to favorite. And we can go search for a glyph to choose favorites later. I'm not going to do that right now. And I just swipe. There it is. Swipe left, swipe right. Oh, my swipe view. And of course, I can invoke this to do things like actually delete or favorite these. But this is this is more just for the, the UI sake. Um, but yeah, I can, I can add more. So if I want to add a different left item, I just add another swipe item. And we'll set a different color. Blue. Oh, that's that's text. Favorite two. No. Type it open. Now I have that. Lots of swipe items. Very easy. And of course, I can make it so that it doesn't stay open by default, so that it closes as soon as I've I've swiped it. Um, all those things. All right. Last thing, I want to show you some Xamarin Community Toolkit. I have this button here. The text is toaster. Let's give it a background color because iOS buttons are. Uh, you know, the worst. Mm, let's make it a white button. Perfect. Coaster. Um, I'll close this swipe view. So it doesn't do anything. But this is part of the reason I love using Hot Restart and Hot Reload kind of together so much. I want this to pop a toast up using the Xamarin Community Toolkit Toast API when I click on it. So I'm going to do clicked equals IntelliSense, even though my app is running right now, IntelliSense is still going to create an event handler for me. But it can't reload code behind yet. So it gives me some squiggles. And it says, hey, uh, we can't do this while the app's running. You can actually see this is an edit and continue error, which is, which is pretty interesting um, if you've ever used Windows edit and continue. So I'll leave my app running for now. I'll just uh, I'll make this an, an await or an async because I'm going to use the API for the toasts that is async. And it is, I believe, display and type toast async. And then I need to give it a message. So maybe toasted, you know? Uh, give it a second. Now, this is going to say it doesn't have it. We'll go into quick actions. I've already pulled in the Xamarin Community Toolkit, uh, the Xamarin Community Toolkit Nougat. So I'll click this, add it up top. My only squigglies are now green. I'm going to hit the restart button. Give it a second. Let's see if my debugger decides to cooperate today. Maybe my indicator view will show up. I don't think it will. I'm going to have to figure out what happened with that. Um, it's just commenting and uncommenting code. It should work, right? Who knows? Uh, we're going to give it a sec. Let the debugger start thinking. Mm -hmm. Click on my app. Now it's a restart, not a reload. So I am bumped back to the beginning of my app. I'm not, not putting the same page, but I can now go to my plants page, hit this button. Where is it? Maybe I'm not clicking the button right. Well, we'll run it on Android and see if it's there. Uh, but yeah, toasts, very cool. Hold on, got my emulator up and running. Oh my goodness, is enabled. <laughs> Thank you. I disabled it so that I didn't start clicking it during the demo. But now my emulator's thinking, so we'll just uh, hot reload out of the way. Thank you, chat. You guys are being great. Zam fan. I wish I knew who you were, but you're just a fan, so it's okay. You can stay anonymous like Batman. Uh, let's see if I cancel this. Cancel. There we go. Back to iPhone. Try this again. So much faster. And we're doing great on time, too. I really thought I... Uh, was gonna like really run on run over on this, but I didn't. Yes, I am three quarters of the way to vacation mode. Um, responsive design on an iPad tablet. Great question. So I'm using stack layouts for all of this. So for the most part, it'll just kind of scale vertically or, or horizontally. Um, there are a lot of really good blogs out there for building. A, a more responsive kind of Xamarin Forms layout. I'm not the right person to give you tips on that, but um, I found a lot of really good resources online that show me kind of how that works. Um, Flex Layout, Visual State Manager is both great suggestions. 
uh, just using scaled fonts and stuff instead of typing in the numbers. Um, Mots has a good blog. Yes, he does, Sweetie. Faster coding with an iPhone or an Android real device? Good question. I, I kind of find my iPhones faster at this point, but I also like using my Android device. Um, it just kind of depends on my mood. So let's, is enabled that, go back to this page, click that button. There's my toast. Came out of the toaster. Everything's good. Now I can go on vacation. So uh, yeah, that is everything I want to show you. I know that was kind of a whirlwind and Dave put his slides on Dropbox. I'll make sure I put mine up on the GitHub for this project, which is um, uh, Maddie Legere one slash plant lady. But all of this is available in the Xamarin Forms 5 preview and the Xamarin Community Toolkit most recent release slash preview. Um, so feel free to grab them on, on NuGet, just check off show pre-release items on Windows and, and on Mac, I think there's a different one as well um, to get your pre-release. And then also visit aka.ms slash XF5 to uh, check out all of the Xamarin Forms 5 goodness. So thank you so much for joining. Uh, we still, we have plenty of time until the 6 p.m. So I'll, I'll hang around and answer some questions. I don't know, Jake, if you wanna hang around and answer questions. Um, and thank you if you've contributed to Xamarin, we're, just, we're, I'm just thrilled with how many more things I've been able to do um, based on the past couple of releases. So exit preview date. Great question, Andy. Uh, this holiday season is the answer I have. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty much it. What's my top three favorite libraries? Oh my goodness. Oh. Um, I'll go third party. Of course, there are a bunch of first party libraries I like. Um, Pancake View for sure. Debug Rainbows. I don't want to give them all to Steven Thevisen, Thevisen, but uh, um, I do really like Debug Rainbows. So that just sets the background color on all your like layout and actual elements so you can see where everything sits in your UI. Um, very, very helpful for people like me who don't understand how layouts work. And I don't know, I love Sharpnado. I love FF image loading. Of course, John John Dix, I guess, is kind of his first party because he works for us, but Resizatizer is great. Yeah, that's probably my... Yeah. Well, Jake, Jake's entire life right now is making your, your shared project that's do more true. stuff. <laughs> so very exciting. Morning and night is all I think about. <laughs> yeah. Why have Toast in the toolkit when we have the awesome ACR.user dialogues? Great question. So my kind of, my hypothesis... Um, and I think the theory with which the, excuse me, the toolkit is being built um, is that it's very simple. There's not a lot of crazy customization stuff you can do. If you need a lightweight toast that just looks like the system toast, pops up, put a message on it. I can set a delay. I can maybe make my message a little bit fancier if I want, maybe put an icon in it. That's it. Um, things like ACR user dialogues are super, super powerful. So for new users, they can be really intimidating. Um, or if you just need a toast to kind of just like pop up and that's that, it's a simple app. Um, and that'll, that'll get you kind of most of the way there with most apps or all the way there with some apps too. Um, but of course the third party toolkits exist because people want to do super heavy customization and stuff. And that's where things like ACR come in. Uh, material flame frame and Sharpnado with blur is so nice. So nice. Uh, John, John teases, wait until you see the upcoming Xamarin binding helpers. I know, very exciting. All right, other questions in the chat, please. Oh, previously asked, what about Live Property Explorer? Yes, so it is uh, not um, supported yet for Xamarin apps. It is support in progress. So we have to rebuild it for Mac as well. Um, but we just have to hook it up to the Xamarin Forms types and then make sure everything works. There's a, there's a lot of testing we do before we put features in Visual Studio, believe it or not. Um, we can't just like turn stuff on and throw it out there, even though that's what I ask people to do, then they get mad at me. So I, I believe it, I believe we're working on it, on lighting it up in January. We actually have a program with MIT, which is down the street from the Cambridge office, Cambridge Mass, where a lot of Xamarin, uh, Xamarin's sit or sat in the pre-COVID world. Yikes. <laughs> and yeah, and we have MIT externs, we call them, come and work with us for a month. So that's one of the project ideas we've tossed around is doing the live property editor explorer 
Um, and if you're unfamiliar with the LPE, it's kind of like in the Chrome debug tools where you can inspect and change around the live elements, but it doesn't actually hit your code. So you can just see what things look like without screwing up your XAML, your source. It's really nice at runtime. Yeah. What else? Any other questions? Nothing? Oh. Will Maui include code completion suggestion for XML files like styles XML? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I love code completions. So we have, so, Z so XML, Android XML, we do have IntelliCode and IntelliSense for now. Um, so if you're doing native Android, you you should start having those pop up, lots of code completion. Uh, and, and we always have XAML IntelliSense. Um, that's kind of like probably one of my favorite features, I think, of VS is all the IntelliSense and, co and code completions we have. Um, so Maui will, of course, continue to have those. And we are also looking at ways to make your XAML IntelliSense even smarter, maybe with more than just code completion, but also using some of the things you might've seen in the C Sharp, like smart refactorings they're doing with IntelliCode, where they refactor out functions you've used a couple times and stick them at the top level. We would love to start doing something like that for XAML as well. All right, you have uh, 28 minutes before the wrap up. So go grab yourself a coffee or an adult beverage, depending on what time zone you're in. I won't judge. Uh, thank you so much, Jake. Thank you so much for doing this whole demo. Uh, it's kind of, I kind of pulled him in last minute, but he did a great job. 4.32 AM, Whoa. my goodness. <laughs> Uh, yes, and, and if you're in the U.S., happy Thanksgiving. Uh, wherever you are, happy holidays. Um, it's a pleasure getting to chat with all of you. And hopefully, we get to see each other soon in the new year. Thanks, everyone. Okay. All right. <laughs>